Hello, this is another calculus video. Uh, I've been following James Stewart's calculus textbook, sixth edition. Uh, this is the second video covering uh, section 8.2, which is on trigonometric integrals. Uh, the first video I did uh, had to do with trigonometric integrals where the power of sine at least had one that was odd. So maybe you had a cosine to the third power or a sine to the fifth power, something where at least one of the sine or cosine that you were asked to integrate, if you had two of them there, um, was to a odd power. And that ability to break out um, the power um, to where you had one uh, by itself and then the other even allowed you to, you could work with that using um, substitution. However, um, let's look at when the powers of sine or cosine are even. By the way, I decided to go ahead and take a calculus two course at a, at a particular college. So I'm, I'm kind of catching up with my videos as I do my homework. Anyway, so let's, let's dive right in. Fun. Um, it's real now. Um, so I'm relearning my trig formulas. Um, some of them I didn't have as firmly in mind. When you have a sine, when you're asked to integrate a sine to an even power or cosine to an even power or a sine to an even power times a cosine to the even power, when you're in that kind of a situation, the what are called half angle identity formulas are helpful. I'm trying to relearn these since 1982, fall. <laughs> anyway, um, when I had trig uh, in high school. So half angle identities. So like that's when you have sine squared or cosine squared, um, there's the half for half angle identity. But this is more difficult to deal with uh, than something to the first power. So these identi identities are helpful when you have when you're asked to integrate a sine or cosine to an even power. So sine squared x is one half, think, well, this is the half angle identity, so there's the one half, times one minus cosine of two x. And again, it's easier to deal with this integrating than it is to deal with, with this. The cosine formula is very similar. You've got the one half there, except it's plus instead of minus. And I always think of, uh, again, this may not help you, but I think if the cosine is strong and the sine is weak, you know, and so the sine is minus, you know, and it switches to cosine, you know, and the, but the cosine is strong and the cosine stays. I don't know if that helps you. If you have infinite brain cells, you know, just memorize it. But that's, that's kind of to help me remember it. All right, well, here was one of my homework problems uh, this week um, that um, uh, was for real now. Uh, the book, actually, if you're following the sixth edition or uh, Essential Calculus, it's it's section 6.2 six, six in Essential Calculus, which is abridged, and it's much better, I think, um, but uh, or it's better. Um, this is, uh, there is a sign to the fourth problem there, but my homework was a 3x, uh, and also with a definite integral. So let's go ahead and do my homework, shall we? Uh, so the integral from 0 to pi over 3 of sine to the fourth uh, power 3x. All right, so the first thing, how can I break this down? Well, sine to the fourth is sine squared squared, right? So I can break it down into this, where I now have the integral from zero to pi over three of sine squared squared. Um, and that's gonna make it easier, uh, as you'll see in a second. Now that I have this middle part down to sine squared of something, I can use the half angle identity. What is it gonna be again? It's gonna be one half, times one and the sine is wimpy, so it's minus cosine of two, whatever that is. So let's break it on down. So the integral from zero to power over three of one half, that's half angle identity, one minus, because the sine is wimpy, cosine of two, this, which is two times three x is six x, all right? And it's still squared. But now at least I've gotten this one down to the first power, which I can, I can work with that. All right, well, let's, let's keep going. Uh, let me pull this from the previous page. Uh, let's go ahead and multiply this all out, shall we? So one half squared is one fourth because one squared is one and two squared is four, right? So it's going to have a one fourth when I square this part. And then let's just multiply this out um, as part of our squaring. So one squared is one. And then first inside, outside, last, right? Remember that? So two times the these pi times each other minus two times uh, this. So that's inside outside added together. And then last is going to be a minus times a minus is a plus, and then cosine squared six x. All right. So um, we still have this cosine squared. What are we going to do with it? Well, let's use the half angle identity on it. 
wow, it's a, it's a, it's a dream within a dream. Uh, hold on for the time of your life. All right, so let me multiply it out. So an integral from zero to power of three, one fourth times one is one fourth. One fourth times two is one half, right? Two fourths, one half, cosine of six x. Uh, and then uh, I, I skipped a step and went ahead and multiplied uh, this out. So the one fourth, there's the one fourth. And the half angle identity is gonna be one half, one plus, because the cosine is strong. The cosine of two x, well, it's six x, so two times six x is 12 x. All right, there we got it. We multiplied it out. Um, now let's let's go ahead and clean this this up a little bit, um, shall we? So, actually, I went ahead and integrated in my head. I'm sorry, I'm saving space. And when I wrote it out, I didn't do I didn't skip the step because my brain is old and I mess mess things up. But uh, let me go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and integrate on the fly. So the integral of one fourth is one fourth x, and all of this is from zero to power of three. So I haven't forgotten. It's a definite integral. Got to put that at the end to remind me later that I've got to do that. So uh, I'm going to integrate this. So what is the integral of this going to be? Uh, well, there's the one half. So when you the integral of the cosine of x is the sine of x. Uh, there's the six x. No problems there. Where did the one six come from? Well, let's let's think of it as going backwards. So I always double check. Um, the derivative of this should be this. If if this is the integral of this then the derivative of this should be this. That's the fundamental theorem of, of calculus. It goes both ways. Sines and integration, or differentiation, integration goes back and forth. So let's go ahead and differentiate this and see whether we end up with, it, with this without the one half, because the one half is up front. So the derivative of the sine of x is the cosine of x. Okay, sine of six x becomes cosine six x, great. But by the chain rule, I have to also multiply it by six. So the one sixth cancels out the multiply by six uh, so that I get just, one in front of this. Um, so it works. So whenever I'm integrating uh, this kind of a thing, I'm going to have to put a, a one over whatever out front so that it stays what it was uh, in, in tune with what it wants. Okay, so that's good. Uh, one fourth times one half times one. That's kind of looks fun, doesn't it? One fourth times one half is one eighth times one is one eighth. And then if I integrate it, it becomes one eighth x. Okay, and then one eighth multiplies by this two. That's where the one eighth came from. Multiply by that, and then I'm going to integrate this. So the integral of the cosine of twelve x is the sine of twelve x. However, because of the twelve, we're going to have to cancel it out like we did with that fraction. So that when I let me go backwards and make sure it works. So the the derivative of the sine of x is that cosine of x. Okay, that works. And then by the chain rule, I'm going to have to multiply by twelve. It cancels out. I'm left with one, and oh, everything works. All right. So this is indeed the. We've now done the integral part. Um, wonderful. Now that now we have to do the uh, from zero to pi over three part. So let me bring it on forward. You may not be able to see all that, but it's basically was on the bottom of the previous page. So let me clean it up a little. One fourth x. Yeah. Um, one twelfth times the sine of six x. Yep. Yeah. 1 8 x, and then 8 times 12 is 96, 196, although that's going to go away, doesn't matter, but let's go ahead and do it. Sine of 12 x from 0 to power of 3. All right, now let's go ahead and do the from 0 to power of 3. We do the power over 3 first, right? So when I plug in pi over 3 here, I'm going to get uh, pi over uh, 3 times 12, uh, 4 is 12. So pi over 12 is what I'm going to get here, minus uh, 1 fourth 0. Well, that disappears. And so I'm left with just pi over 12, right? Now for this one, um, there's the 1 12th, but the sine of uh, six times pi over three, six pi over three is, uh, that's even, right? That's two pi. The sine of two pi is zero. Got a little unit circle here in my background, right? Uh, for sine, uh, let me see, it's a mirror image for you, isn't it? Is that right? Uh, so the sine is zero at uh, zero, and then at pi, um, it's zero again. And at two pi, it's zero again. So when I multiply six times pi over three, it ends up as two pi. The sine of two pi is zero and blah, blah. And minus uh, six times zero is zero. So the sine of zero is zero. Blah, blah. So this whole thing's gonna just disappear. When I do from zero to pi over three, this whole term just blah, disappears. One eighth x, uh, well, the, the pi over three part, is going to be pi over 24, and then times zero, 
one eighth times zero, you know, womp, womp, and I'm left with pi over 24. All right. So then we end up with this 196 times sine of 12 x. So uh, 12 pi over three is four pi. Well, that just goes around the unit circle twice and it ends up being at zero again. It ends up at zero again. And so that boop, boop, and sine of zero is zero. Boop, boop. So th this term and this term, when we do it from zero to pi over three, this term and this term just completely disappear. And all we're really left with is pi over 12 plus uh, pi over 24. Now I did a little algebra in my head. If I multiply two, two over two, multiply it by one, two over two, then I've got two pi plus pi is three pi, and that's 24 and then to the denominator, three divided by 24 is eight, you know, or 24 divided by three is eight, so pi over eight, and that's the answer. And indeed, I submitted that answer and it was correct. Uh, and so I win. Well, calculus wins. God wins, right? Because God invented calculus. So, uh, and Isaac Newton and Leibniz. That's not important right now. This has been trigonometric identities. Our goal in this was to figure out what to do when we have uh, a sine or cosine to an even power or some mixture of sines and cosines to an even power. What do we do with it? Well, the half, half angle identity is uh, a good hint. Well, this has been trigonometric um, integrals.